right. Hey, welcome to the Tall Mac Podcast. This is uh, just me and the boys because this is our second season. First generation podcasters, but second season in the new studio. It's wow. got the new car smell, boys. It really does. I don't know. A little fresher air in here. A little carpet. I mean, I miss the Buckle Bunny ring. You know, it's like when you trade in your old truck or something like that. You know, you get a new one. It's going to take us a little while to get used to it and everything. But I, uh, I think we... We need to talk about the last year. I mean, I, I was talking to Craig, and Craig told me the average podcast lasts seven episodes. Yeah, and what are we on, Craig? We're on 80. We're probably on 80-something. Like, I mean, that's how many we're on. We don't even freaking know how many we're on. But, yeah, the average podcast lasts seven episodes before they throw in the towel. And I can tell you, I can see how that happens, right? It uh, It took... It took all four of us, Craig included. You guys never get to see Craig. He's behind the the lines there. But it took all four of us to get to that 80 episode of yeah, right. and Mark. And, and us four. And then we've had help along the way. Oh, of course. People have come in and gone out and stuff like that. So I want to make sure I uh, say thank you to all the people that. Everybody that, that's helped us that along the way. Maybe ain't here no more and stuff like that too. And yeah. For different reasons. But, I mean, we're we're grateful for all the help that we've gotten to get to this point. But, uh, um. I mean, you learn, you, you, you make the joke all the time. We don't know what we're doing. We're first generation podcasters, but I mean, it's kind of the truth, right? Like, um, it's simple. You want to kill a cow. I can teach you how to do that. You want to bail some hay. You want to learn how to rope a steer, but we were all brand new at this. So we have gotten a lot of help along the way. Uh, shout out Chelsea Schaefer. I think she helped us tremendously. Like she, she came in on the, on the plastic table. Yeah, second episode, she was there. And, second episode. And uh, Caesar's like, you know, with his connections to be able to talk to her, that was one of the things I was really excited to talk to her about because yeah. I, I, we got it right here, Team Open Journal. I mean, she what she's done in this uh And continues to do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, continue to do. She, that. What, you know, every morning I wake up and, and I, I hit Team Open Journal, Facebook deal, and, and uh, it's always something new. You know, she never takes a break. You know what I mean? That's, what's, that's what keeps me hooked. Keep their, back watching. their angles... That they get on their TikTok videos and the sound. I don't know who. I don't know if Chelsea does it or she's got somebody that does it or whatever. Whoever, however, they're spot on. Like yeah. <laughs> they somehow match the music to the guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. How how many people we've had on this? We've had so many episodes, but the faces that we've seen. We've had Chelsea Schaefer, Larry D. Guy, Trevor Brazil, Chris Aprina. Uh, Yes, I mean Fred Whitfield. We've had some of the, the legendary Guns. cowboys that have the, the best to to grace our sport, and I, that's one of my favorite things about it. It's just kind of pick their brain a little bit and get to to hear their their, especially what how they feel about rodeo. Yeah, and, I mean, and in a little bit we have we have arguably one of the best eighteen year olds to ever pick up a heel rope coming on the podcast. It was neat. That was neat. Denton yeah. Dunning is. Very true. Very he, talented. So, and, and we get a chance to talk to these guys. And I mean, you listed off some of them and some of them become friends and they just call you when you're going down the road or you just talk to them. I talked to Larry, I talked to Dennis Gates. I mean, it's the list kind of goes on and on because we have a big list, but and I think it's cool. But like me and Brandon, some of these people we've never met or never talked to until they sit down with us. But Caesar has a history with a lot of them. So then, me and Brandon's questions are a lot different than what Caesar's asking because, you know, Caesar already knows all that stuff. So he's asking, quick, you know, so I think it's a cool, uh, our dynamic, dynamic that we have going yes. on. I mean, yes. And that's what I, that's what I hear from people. Right. So the first thing you hear from all your friends is they don't listen to the podcast, but then as soon as you get somebody on here that they like, they, well, why didn't you ask? I didn't know you listened, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I just happened to do it that way. No, it's not a radio station. You, just admit you listen. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I like, and then to to pick the brain of uh, Miles Baker was one of my favorites uh, episodes, and and you know, uh, uh, getting to talk to Bobby Mo. Dude, I was like, like starstruck with Bobby Mo. Yeah, because I watched that guy spur holes in horses. Like, I I mean, that was my guy, like to watch, you know. And it was like I got to sit down and talk to this dude. Like it, it was cool. And his his whole transition from the, the the animal he was and the bareback riding, and you know his business side of it with the with his WCRA productions, and then uh, 
you know, his horse show that he's he's really focusing on the horse show, the Reliance Ranches horses. It's like, man, this guy went from one end of the arena and kind of transformed himself to kind of a timey. Yeah, that's one of my favorite yeah. favorite things to, to you know that about Bobby Moat is he, he his business side of it. He he completely changed his his life and in to roping now. It's kind of and, neat. And you know, like getting to meet like Billy Myers and and those guys and getting to go over there to the Lazy E and and you know, like Brandon said, you you've known these guys for a while. You've been to a lot of these places, so you were helping explain it. But then when we got there, it was like there can be no explanation for this. Like, it's just have to see it. It's next level, yeah. you know, and, and to get to sit down. Yeah. Like with miles, come on, dude. Like, and the other day he followed me on TikTok. I forgot me. <laughs> like, I kind of feel like he's like, Whoa, this, I know this dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I know this dude. And, and I guess you, you see these guys on TV and you know, you're a fan or whatever, but, Another story. You talk to Eric Rogers, and in his time off, he drives tow truck in Eloy. Yeah. What? Who would have guessed that in a million years? But like, that's just how cool these dudes are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just, and I think he's setting up for his future right there. Just, mm-hmm. I mean, whatever happens, if he just decides that I'm not, I'm not going to want a rodeo no more, and maybe I don't have to rely on, on my rope to make a living. Him and Shane Wilcox have a real good deal going with the Elite Towing. Mm-hmm. Like, as soon as he's home, Shane's on the phone. Hey. Get out of bed. I need yeah. to go over here. You know, a lot of the stuff they're towing is in the Whoa. middle of the night. I need you, I need you to, to help tow, tow some stuff out in the middle of the night here. And, and, and so we've talked about that before. Like I, you know, I mean, I got, I, I look at everything like a business. Brandon will agree to that, right? And, and I mean, I look at some of these guys like, man, they are badass. But how long can you be badass at this level? Because there's an 18-year-old kid coming on a surprise or a 16 year old kid coming out of Marana that is coming for your throat. Like, and they want it. They want to be there. <laughs> they want their sharks. And if you're, you're wanting to be at home a little bit, cause you're a little bit older and like you're getting kind of comfortable at the house, yeah. then guys are going to get you. Right. And but, so, you know, that's the one thing that I see that the industry maybe needs more than, than a lot is, is life after open, you know, like what are these guys going to do? Or maybe, you know, like we, we talked to Larry a little bit about it, like maybe agents, how agents set up big football players and, and, and make sure that, you know, say, say Denton wins 100000 over the weekend. Well, instead of him, you know, going and buying a, a really cool flatbed for the truck or, you know, a whole bunch of nothing that he doesn't need, they take 50000 of that and they invest it. Or you know something, I yeah. whatever the numbers are, but I feel like the sponsor need to there's need to be a way to get more sponsors involved for the the rodeo athletes, and, yeah. and I think that's a way to get them up and down the road. I know the rodeos are trying to get more paid in there and stuff, but like NASCAR, right? Oh yeah, it's it's they they got a lot of sponsors. They got people that sponsor the cards and stuff like that, and it's it's a it's a real cool to watch, right? You know, like you go to one of them, there's a little drama going on and. And I and I feel like they do that with the social media. They have the teams, and maybe this team splits up, and Chelsea does Chelsea does a good job with that. Like maybe this team split up, and they're rubbing with these guys, and it happens every year. I think that's uh, I think it's pretty important, you know, to to if we can get more sponsors for the for the Cowboys, where they can have it look like NASCAR and the shirts. Like a, Patrick Smith does a really good job, and I like to see more of that to help these guys go rodeo. The difference I see, I mean, there's lots of differences, but one that I primarily see between like say NASCAR and rodeo and is NASCAR is not taking product for sponsorship dollar, right? Like if duck dynasty or whatever sponsors a NASCAR, they're not giving him 4,000 duck calls. No, you know, we're like, and I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody for doing this. I'm just saying that's the big difference. I see there's actually like hard money exchanging hands. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, in in the rodeo deal, if I don't know a horseshoe maker sponsors you, you get five thousand pairs of horseshoes, which is cool. Don't get me wrong, but you can't stick that horseshoe in the ATM and buy gas with it. <laughs> well, I, I I picture golf a lot, you know, yeah. right? So golf, them guys are not paying for their golf balls, or they're just not getting so much in golf balls a year, and right. and but they're getting hard cash too. Yeah, that like, and I mean, if you, you know, like. 
I think it's really cool. We had Fred Whitfield on here, and then now he's one of the coaches for the Kid Rock Rodeo. Yeah. Like, I think that's awesome. Like, yeah. practically, yeah. I feel like me and Fred are best friends. But, uh, <laughs> like, look at what that rodeo is going to generate in revenue. Exactly. Some Somebody like Kid Rock doesn't get involved with the rodeo. And we talked to Fred Whitfield on camera and off camera. And he ain't going to get involved unless there's some hard cash exchange in here. Write that down. We, <laughs> we found that out, right? And and that's cool. And yeah. you know what? There ain't, I'm not going to get involved with a lot of stuff unless there's some hard cash change in hands, right? I got a family to feed. You got one. You got one. You know what I mean? So that's you how you know somebody's serious. Right? You can't knock yeah. these guys for being that way. But that's the big difference I see. Yeah. You know, I, I think there needs to be some agents involved. I think... The person that needs to lead that charge, in my opinion, is Larry D. Guy and Chelsea Schaefer. Because I think with marketing from Chelsea and Larry's ability to back up what she says with championships and her rodeo knowledge. Yeah. You know, knowledge of the game. And Trevor Brazil calling her and her curbing it. I mean, that's a big deal. <laughs> Pretty gangster to me. Pretty gangster, right? So I mean you you let them run off with that or something yeah. but that's that's a big thing that i see because they're going to need something after rodeo because if you if you take your feelings out of it and just look at the big game there's 16 and 18 and 18 year olds coming for those dudes throats every day man i i slow down and to be with the family and stuff and and I'm blessed to be able to do lessons and, and do clinics and train some horses and ride some horses and go to the horse shows and stuff. And man, uh, I, I was, uh, like I said, I was blessed to be able to find that way out. I, it's hard to make a living rodeo and, and provide for family, pay for a place. And, you know, you got rigs and horses. You got to kind of, it's, uh, I did it for 20 years, pretty, pretty hardcore, pretty, no, no breaks. And man, that's, that was tough on me. And there's people that do it longer. So, uh, I feel like the the game is going to evolve with all these young guys and Denton come in and you know we talked about Eric Rogers he he's at a point now where he can win another world title or he can just stay at home if he wants to he's our what else does he need to accomplish in, in rodeo he's already won pretty much everything he needs to win yeah and, and if he wanted to come home next year and drive tow trucks by golly it, he's set but it he's all in right now Eric is. And, it, and if his attitude was to change and be like, you know what, I kind of want to be home, the Denton Dunnings kids, you know, the Catch Kelton kids are gonna, gonna get you because guess what, Denton Dunnings willing to drive from Surprise Arizona, drive all night right now to to Steveville, Texas for a jackpot that's gonna pay fifty thousand. You know what I mean? And not scared to do it. Right. So like that's the difference. Yeah, that's that's a huge difference. And you know, the more I I get to know these guys and I watch and I watch and I watch. Um, it's man it, the dream has to be the nfr right that's the pull that's why jb mooney did it that's why you know a lot of these guys from the pbr just want to make the finals it's just because it's the finals but at some point i mean i hope it doesn't happen but at some point man that that luster might get a little dull because when these kids can go make a hundred thousand dollars in a weekend and drive you know like say denton from and obviously we're talking about Denton because he's coming on in a little bit, but drive 40 miles from the house. It, that's got to get something that Fred said in the interview that you guys were on. Um, he said, you know, the approach for getting the breakaway in the yeah. NFR, he said the approach isn't that approach. The approach is making something else more appealing to make these girls go over there. Same with, with rodeo. I need mean, to step the game up a little yeah. bit, paying out a little bit, you know. Well, like the like Kimes Ranch did that. Well, if there's a rodeo and there's a big jackpot, you know, say at the same, you know, we know, we know what I'm saying. Like if they coincide, yeah. What do you think? You know what I mean? You go over here and win this deal, and or you go over there. Man, and win I this deal. I tell you what, the the George Strait was was a right there along the same time as Austin Rodeo and and Houston, and there was guys making sure like they were catching flights and stuff like that to make the rodeos, but. They were not missing the George Strait, that that rodeo that rope and paid so much, and and like they were not going to miss that because they were getting paid a hundred thousand that day, which you know Houston, you got to go three weeks there and qualify, qualify, qualify. Next thing you know, you 
and and they almost have to go to that George Strait yeah. to keep their rodeo dream alive to keep going yeah. to the summer yeah. keep fuel in the tank. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So, right. It was That's almost not. It wasn't almost their decision at that point. It was almost right. a have to be. But. So, but I mean, you you've been sponsored by these guys, still sponsored by some of them. Um, if you post on your social media that you won the George Strait, or you post on your social media that you won Austin, I bet George Strait gets more hits, right? Yes, yes, so it does. Some of these big jackpots are becoming more important than some of the rookies. because the name is on top of the George Strait, and I think the Kid Rock deal that's what is going to bring more fans in. And that's kind of what, yeah. what we need, and and Good. more fans, more sponsors, and I think that helps the whole rodeo circle. That yeah, way. and it helps it helps these kids. I mean, I don't like meeting, you know, past world champions that aren't doing good, right? Because I I feel like if you're a world champion and you've climbed that hill and you've put in the time, like I feel like you 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 should be good for the rest of your life, right? My, Michael Jordan isn't isn't worried about anything, or right. you know, I mean, and some of these, you know, guys are not having the greatest time after winning the, these world titles and it's just, it's kind of it's kind of rough to watch a little bit you know but it's it's crazy that doing this podcast has really opened my eyes and a lot of my buddies that listen to it and things like that i i get questions all the time and and things but it's it's a different like we're bringing a different side of it right that's what that's what i was getting ready to say um you know back in your day caesar when at your height of your career there wasn't so many of these podcasts or was there any there was hardly Man, any, maybe you know? there wasn't there wasn't any podcast i just recently the rodeo game is yeah. uh, they kind of gotten popular and i'm not saying that we're doing anything different than anybody else but i think even these little podcasts like we're doing right here helps the sport in a lot of ways you know what i mean i yeah. I, I think if this was going on back in your your day in this era i mean you 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 brought it up early chelsea schaefer was the first one kind of starting in, in interviewing and i remember being at the nfr and we, we she sat down and she asked some questions kind of like we, we do right here and so like i said she's uh seen the game evolve a lot yeah and and with her social media stuff that she does she's kind of growing the game as yeah. well bringing more Big fans time. to the game so i have a lot of respect like, for her that, that's kind of what what the game needs is more of that stuff and i think uh it all helps. she builds the the ropers up too like uh her and, her and tyler wade are really good friends and so mm -hmm. when uh so like uh we're sponsored by Quinity as well mm -hmm. They they help each other out and kind of kind of yeah. uh, as far as videos and 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 pictures and stuff like that. So I feel like a, a sponsor like Equinity and Chelsea Schaefer kind of promoting it and then a, putting a Tyler Wade World Champion Roper on there. It's really yeah. really good for the game. Let's, let's talk about Equinity a little bit because obviously doing this, we've been approached by a bunch of people and and you know we're we're not doing this podcast to pay our truck payments so we can be a little picky on who we want to partner up with. Right. So we met with that guy twice, you know, we, we met him in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. then we met him again in Vegas and I just liked that guy's approach. And that's what I told Brandon. I'm like, man, this, this guy just kind of seems like he fits, you know, like the approach wise, you know, and, and if you, if you watch, there's a lot of people that think that it, that approach fits because that dude is everywhere. Like, I mean, the BFI, the, I mean, you, you name it, he's on everybody's shirt and his, um, his barn talk, what is it? What's it called? Barn check, check, barn check, his barn check with miles and Trevor. Forget about it. Man. Yeah. That is, Shout out to big John. Yeah. yeah. That is, and, and he's, uh, he's a straight shooter and that's what I like. I don't like to hear what I want to hear. I want to hear the truth and then I can work with that. Mm -hmm. And I think that he liked our approach too. And uh, we sat down with them. We're like, let us show you what we can do. You know, yeah. it's, we don't want nothing. We just want to. Yeah, you don't got to write us a check. We just want to yeah. show you what we can do. And I mean, I'm not saying we're going to do anything any special. He, did, he was but, kind of set back a little yeah. bit by that. He was kind of like, mm, and, uh, you guys aren't going to ask. And man, he's been <laughs> straight up. He's he yeah. sent us uh, arena size uh, banners for our. Oh, yeah, my horses are on. The, we got yeah. boxes of equinity, and uh, we're working with him right now and trying to set up some kind of a match deal, uh, maybe in November ish, something like that. But uh, we're. We got some stuff in the plan and in the works, and we're hoping to. We're very blessed to have them in. Yeah. So, what about uh, who's your guys? This, I mean, I know we talk about this a lot, but this is the recap. So, you got to cut it down to one guest. I I got two. I can't. Uh, okay. <laughs> one. Got to be um, one guest. Well, Tanner Baldwin. He's my number one. That was my favorite. Okay, one. who's number two? Tanner's your buddy. I had fun with. Uh, I had a lot of fun when we did with that Navy SEAL guy. I'm sorry, I don't remember his name right now offhand. 
He was cool, huh? But that I, that was a fun one. But yeah, he was cool. How about you, Caesar? Man, uh, shoot, I, there's a lot of good ones for sure. But I'm glad there's not very many people that get Dakota Kirchner's logger on the podcast. That's he's he's a good cool. friend of mine as well, and we kind of got him in his natural habitat. Yeah, yeah. Over there, yeah, over there, Guthrie. And his wife was drinking yeah, beers. Up in the bar af- after after his work, his day is done, yeah. and he, now he can get to relax. We had him in his natural habitat. Yeah, up, uh, and he couldn't really go nowhere because no, it's Guthrie. Trap, right? Yeah, and so we finally got Dakota on the podcast. And yeah. like that, that was one of my funnest ones. And super cool. Just, yeah. I mean, easy to talk to. And, you know, the, the difference I see with our podcast from, from when we started till even now, is like when we started, we were trying to be, obviously, I mean, you model yourself after other podcasts, right? Like, so we didn't really, like, we tried to do everything by the book. And now I think what's kind of starting to set us apart a little bit is we don't, right? Like, it was cool Dakota's wife brought him a beer. <laughs> like, and it was, it's cool that we talked to Craig. You know what I mean? It's like, and, you don't have to be. And it's okay that I stutter a little bit. Yeah, like, right. because for me. You know what I mean? So I've been told I stutter a little bit. I'm like, man, I'm nervous. I'm yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think it's, I think we each bring something mm-hmm. to it, right? Like, and and that's what it's been a lot of fun. I, I've had a lot of fun doing it. And I, it's, it was just kind of a pipe dream, and then uh, now, I mean, it's it's fun. And, and now, now we're second anniversary. I know that mm-hmm. I, without this podcast, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have been able to talk to none of these people. I mean, we could go in passing and say hi, a little small talk, but actually, like you say, sit down and have a. 50- yeah, I mean, is Aaron is is uh, Aaron Senegini gonna walk by you in Vegas and go, "What up, Brandon?" Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it ain't gonna happen. He's yeah. watching the podcast, like he, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, that's cool. Um, and then Trey Yates was fun because we got to talk. Dude, about I was just gonna say, like, you guys I was waiting for that, you right? guys to ask me because mine's got to be a coin flip <laughs> between Trey Yates and Dennis. Man. Well, Dennis is your buddy. Dennis, Dennis is your buddy. Dennis is my tanner, so he's out, right? he's out. He's the one we throw back, right? He's my homie. So then I guess it'd be Larry and Trey. And then, you know, like we, we see the views and we see the comments and stuff. And like some of like the baseball players, you know, um, yeah, those guys we had them on because I wanted to have them on. That's why we had them yeah. on. An- were Anthony friends. was pretty cool, yeah. man. He was. Yeah. Dude, Anthony came to my daughter's soccer dinner yeah. and talked to yeah. him about how important the t- this time in their life is and how he played ball his whole entire life. And he probably couldn't tell you every major league baseball team he played on, but he could tell you exactly where he was when he played baseball in high school and every game he played in and what position he played. He said, because you're never going to forget it. And like, I remember uh, one set of girls were, there was probably three or four of them over here at a table. We had it at La Pasita and, and uh, there was like three or four girls sitting at the table, and we were just like a table away from them so we could hear what they were saying. And the one girl's asking the other girl, she's like, are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? And she's like, I don't know, but I feel like this is my only chance. And I'm thinking, what are they going to do, right? <laughs> so the gr- one girl gets up and walks over to Anthony and is like, can we have a picture with you? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so they all wanted a picture, but they talked about it amongst themselves. So, I mean, I just, yeah, again, well, that's think, a friend. Well, just think of how crazy that was for us to meet him. Yeah. Randomly talks to one of my workers and then a phone call, a text, boom, boom, hunting, do, 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 do. Yeah. Now he's a fan. Yeah, he, he, is. He, calls, he calls you when he gets stuck yeah. or me when he yeah, gets stuck. All the time. I had to go pull him out. He's went yeah. hunting on every piece yeah. of property we had. <laughs> He has a bobcat frozen in my freezer right outside here right now. <laughs> that he got from here. Yeah. Hey, I've got a couple bales with some feathers in that. Is that is that because of Anthony <laughs> maybe or I don't know. I'm just wanting to say that just there was there was a few feathers in yeah. the bale that yeah. he found. <laughs> that's probably from him. And then like I loved it when we were in Vegas when you were roping and I was interviewing all your kids. Oh yeah. Like that's fun, right? Like, you know, well, you said saw him up here yesterday and we were Doing all this, getting everything ready. She knew. They were ready. They're they're gonna be second generation podcast. Yeah, they're gonna be second yeah, generation. They're gonna be the next generation. What I know with the fans though is getting uh, Caesar and Derek back together after all these oh, years. Right. That, that was, was fun. That, that was, was really cool. fun, honestly. And, and that was really cool how we we stepped aside and let you guys have your time because the fans haven't seen you guys together in so many years. And uh, and I I personally didn't feel like I could bring anything to that conversation. Right. Yeah. And I, you know, I think you yeah. felt the same way. And it was like, their time. It, it needed to be Derek and Caesar. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a lot like us traveling, going down the road right there. So 
uh, yeah. people people wondered what that's like because neither one of us say a whole lot but that that right there is just like hey we're we're visiting going down the road and, and that's you, what we used to talk the most you could tell it was like if you watch the podcast it was probably like when you guys first got in the truck together yeah, yeah talked a and lot talked so talk a lot and then like as you hit like flagstaff <laughs> <laughs> but then as you hit you talk man, yeah. you had another story to tell that's true so it, it was cool yeah. and uh just, i i liked how honest the dude was and again uh, same thing with him. He called me the other day first year. Yep. You know, I mean, it just, you kind of build this uh, larger circle and you, and you get, um, some of your heroes get humanized, Big I guess time. you would say. And like we, I mean, this it. guy right here. I mean, oh shit. <laughs> we, uh, I say it all the time. There was nothing as cool as watching this dude suck his black hat down mm-hmm. in the healing box. Looking like he should be getting on a bronc right, or a bull, get ready, right, and he's just ready and he's just gonna eat. Yep. Like you know what I mean? Like you see these TikToks now, and they're like, "Oh, you got the dog," and you, Caesar had the dog. Yeah, long I was TikTok. hungry, man. I was wanting to eat so. I was a hungry yeah, dog. Which it, it's fun, and you know, and you meet him, and then now, now the wolf pack, and so like yep. when I see Second him on the, I see him on the the shoot help. Uh, ads. I'm yeah. like, my boys, do they? Yeah, my, yeah. They eat my burgers. No big deal. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's just cool. And then, you know, you going live was like a big jump for us. And during Vegas, I, we went up to like 300 subscribers or something like that. I mean, going live and and I, and you know, a lot of people say, "Well, it's your name had a lot to do with it." Well, I don't give a shit what had to do with it. Well, do you think it was the shooting? Maybe yeah. the, the 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 shooting that yeah. happened at UNLV <laughs> on campus that probably might have had to. Do. People were pretty yeah. pretty intense right about that. It was it, it got real. It really did. My, that was that was another cool was. episode my, right there. A little my and my favorite part about your videos were watching, watching you know. Cut the, Team Ropers get a bad rap. Rodeo Cowboys get a bad rap, right? And I'm kind of maybe a little part of that because I'm like, yeah, them guys ain't Cowboys or whatever. But like, you know, but when that went down, they are Cowboys because every one of them that their wife was in there with them, they didn't know where this shit was going on, but their wife was behind them. Yeah. And they were in front of them. And like them big old bulldoggers, like that dude better have like a big gun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And and so that that was cool to me. You know, I watched that kind of stuff. We went to Prescott, you know, and and that was our first little taste of it going on the road and, and get to see, you know, we every, you know, we get these people come in sometimes too when we have our sit downs, but to have that many, what do we do? That like eight or nine that yeah. week yeah. or something yeah. like that. But um after that, like Colton Bigelow is my favorite now. <laughs> King Kane Henry, no, but he's part of the family now. Yeah, like, Kane so, called my daughter when she was at school. Yeah, yeah. And Isaac Diaz, like I follow him now, so I feel like you know, little. I, I tell all my kids like, oh, they're my buddy. You know, like yeah. I'm so I mean, maybe them. Trevor Brazil's my friend. <laughs> maybe like, yeah, I forgave Miles Baker for missing for me at the finals. I mean, it's fine. But that happens. I it happens. You know what I mean? My homie now. But I think that's something too that maybe. Pro Rodeo needs to look at, like, not just saying us, but, like, us, Flatbed, all these other dudes that are out here, kind of, uh, everything Rodeo, those guys were great. Like, we're just bringing more eyes, like, you yeah. said, more eyes to the sport. And it's we're, not hurting the sport. And, and we're humanizing these yeah. dudes. Yeah. You know, like, we're, we're not – I feel like it would be like if you met Dale Jr. Like, I just think that guy would be fun to party with, right? You know? Oh, it, yeah. Because, like, uh, you can – like, all these guys would go on ours and go on anybody else's, too. And they're going to get a little bit different story, mm-hmm. you know, or a lot different. You know what I mean? So I think it's well, cool for people. Yeah. I mean, ev- everyone that somebody comes on, right? So Mikey Fletcher's. Oh, I was going to say, we got to give it to Mikey. Oh, I yeah. forgot. Yeah. Mikey That's Fletcher. my boy. Like, and Good old Mike. Let's give Mikey, like, maybe one of the bigger shout outs because his <laughs> girlfriend, wife, beautiful, whatever she was, was sitting right over there by Craig. And yeah, he kept the story when going. He kept the story going about Anna Nicole. And she's over there, and she's trying to look at her phone. She's trying not to pay attention, but, man, I'm married. Like, they don't have to be looking at you to hear what you're saying. So I listened to that interview the other day again because I love that interview. And one of those, I don't know the name of the guy, but he's like, yeah, that guy didn't drink or nothing, but he loved chasing women. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know who he was. About That's that. a real thing, too, Brandon. Oh, yeah. That's, That's a, a real thing. thing. <laughs> I bet. Golly. World champions at that too, huh? Oh man, but could you imagine like what that guy said he went through when he walked into that little store in ne- what Needles, California? That yeah, saw them all, and he's seen all of that. He, oh shit! Like bad. bad deal, you know. But you're you're right. Like a guy like that can come on here and feel more comfortable with us yeah. telling that story 
then maybe with some other people or maybe he goes on a different podcast tells a different story we we gotta have him on a part two because he's okay. got so many stories of just being wild and having fun i don't think anybody had more fun rodeoing no. team roping than mikey did did he i had more fun I than anybody vibe. i love the, i love his vibe he's just a funny <laughs> you what i sent mikey mikey uh-uh. and i said dude i've actually i've got actual footage from when you were junior rodeo and oh, he's like really? he's like what and i was like yeah dude i got i got like actual actual footage somebody sent it to me huh. so let me let me see if i can find it here and uh it, and i told him i said it's either you or dennis gates <laughs> but they said they said it was probably most likely you was it healing or head huh is mikey's a header yeah, so, well, this is not... Well, Mikey not. heals now. He heals this down now. actual footage of, oh. yeah, of Mikey <laughs> or Dennis leaning into your room. Well, I want to say that's thanks for Mikey because the story he told of his, uh, his his great friend Jake Cooper picking him up with his mom um, in the in the pastor side and right said, there. That looked just like... I said, actual Mike. footage of you at a junior rodeo, and he put, LOL, I love it. <laughs> And he's like, dude, when's my uh, episode coming out? I'm ready. You know, <laughs> real like soon. That stuff, right? Like, real soon. You know, think of all the team rope or all the rodeo people we've had on, and then think we've had uh, quadruplets. Oh, yeah, know? Mackley. We've had um, Navy Seals. Oh, we've had uh, Shane Hillenbrand. That's what, whatever you want to call him dude. with emotional speed. I mean, we're open to anything, anybody. Like, I think that's it's refreshing. I think, I, you know, hey, Shane Hillenbrand, bro. Yeah, that was fun. Like I feel like I like, feel like Shay Hill and Brand now that we've done this more. Like back then when we were doing it, we were like this, you know. We we're like, okay, I don't I think I, I think we're about ready. I think I might have more questions you for know, you now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we're more comfortable now. Yeah. Like we move around and like we're more comfortable. Well, I love I, the plastic table. I feel like <laughs> we should have brought the plastic table. And the red solo cups. Yeah. Because it started off with the red solo cups too, but I had kind of grown up a little bit. I was so nervous. I bought an extra pack of lights, thinking that these lights were gonna burn out, and we had to change these lights. They've been on for a year; they never fucking burn out. I was was so nervous. So I would, like I said, like I wanted to be like all these other podcasts where I did my research. So they drink on Joe Rogan. So I'm thinking, shit, I need to drink, dude. You're you gotta drunk. have your brain right on here, bro. So by the by the fill your cups, you know, two, four, six, eight shots of crown later, I'm I don't even know where I'm at. <laughs> like, have I asked you this question about yeah. calf roping? Oh, sorry, Shay. I know I forgot you don't real chat. John uh Joe Rogan's a professional. Oh, you know, I know when you talk about him, he's a professional. He's got two thousand or three thousand episodes, so we're catching him though. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, look how up. we feel. After when you dating. get into the two thousand, I'm sure you'd be able to drink like oh, you can on an episode. And be able to hold your, hold it together. I hope so. I mean, uh, I mean, we had Cody Custer on. Yes. That, yes. Like you know, we, I think we kind of overlooked some of our guests that we've yes. had. I think you know we've had some big guns. My favorite story with Cody, real quick, is when he got out of the truck and Caesar and, and Brandon were in the inside the studio, and I met him. And I'm wearing Jordans and shorts <laughs> and like a beanie. And he's like, what the hell kind of podcast is this? I'm like, Caesar, get out here. He's going to leave. He's gonna is, leave. I'm, it's, a po- it's a cowboy podcast, I promise. <laughs> I was like, yeah. he's going to leave. Hurry up. <laughs> yeah. People people did look at us a little little crazy when we first showed up over there at Lazy E. And we had Dolph Jordans <laughs> on and everything. And then, you know, you start talking. But I don't know, man. It's just my recaps have been fun. Yeah. I mean, it started out like I make the joke, you know, our friends didn't want to listen to it. Obviously, our buddy buddies listen to it, but everybody's like, you ask them, hey, you heard, you heard our podcast. Now we don't even ask because yeah. it's like you either listen to it or you don't. Yeah. Right. Like, the uh, what are we at on subscribers? What do we need like another hundred? I think we're like a thousand or something. I think we're like 850, 870. Come on, YouTube. Something like that. We're almost there. Yeah. We're almost there. But, uh, you know, and I, I got to give a shout out to Carson and you um, that. That video they did with uh, Culture Todd down there at the Junior oh, Rodeo, that man. was awesome. That was on the fly, you know, on the side. And, and Carson did a hell of a job, so we appreciate that. Yeah, too. yeah, I do. I, I think that was cool. And like you said in the beginning, man, a lot of people have helped us along the way. Yep. Maybe they're not here or whatever with us. But, I mean, that's that's just business. That's, that's just, just, just respect, you know. Yeah. I, you know, give credit yeah. where credit's due. And, I think and they that did a good That was a hell of a uh, interview. I mean, that's one of our biggest um, yeah. views so far. So Our TikTok band video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we're going to hopefully have round two with Caesar. I would like Caesar and Coulter to sit down kind of same setting as yeah. you and Derek. And uh, yeah. I mean, for you, I mean, that's obviously your two people you made, the, or 
two of the three that you made the NFR with and uh, started the career off with that guy. Yeah, that, that would be pretty cool. I like to talk about his healing these days. World class healer as well. Yeah, you really you said that he was, uh, that was his dream or that was yep. healing. Was when we were his... kids, he was wanting to be a, a world class healer, make the finals healing. And then that took a little bit of, of a U turn. We st- he started heading for me. You know, his, his, he took his head pretty serious there. I feel yeah. like that guy takes everything serious. Pretty serious, yep. Pretty serious guy. Yeah. Especially when you're dealing with his cows and his ranch, that guy gets real serious. Yeah, I could imagine. Yep. So, but yeah, that that'd be a cool episode one of these times. Yeah. The story you told about the bear, I mean, oh, that was, yeah. that's got to be top one of the yeah, stories yeah. ever. <laughs> it's it's good when he tells it because when when his grandfather found out Papa when mm-hmm. when when Papa found his rope and he put it right there to talk about it, you could still see the fear in his eye. You know when he tells the story, like he was scared to death if his grandfather found his rope, he kind of seen it and he's like, oh no, and yeah. he thought some kind of butt chewing was gonna happen and. He's a little bit disappointed, but I think he kind of had a little smirk on his face there. To, you know, like it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. make sure that that doesn't happen again, kind of deal. But yeah, like maybe Papa made it crazy <laughs> like that. I'm sure Papa roped a bear in his time. And a, a very surprising, a pleasant surprise for, for me to get to meet this guy and, and, and get to know him a little bit was uh, Preston Williams. Um, yes. You know, I, I didn't know much about him. And uh, one of the nicest awesome guys. Bit. And man, he was super nice. Like, he. He makes you feel like you've known him for a long time, and uh, he makes a hell of a bit. Yeah. And uh, we got one here, and uh, working on a deal. Trying to get that to some lucky, some lucky subscriber. We're almost a there. Of, a lot of people didn't know how uh, how decorated of a, no. a champion Preston Williams was. No. You know, like is still to, in, in the Indian yeah. circle, like he's won twenty every twenty three horse trailers. Yeah, he I mean, made. I told him he's that making it since he's 15, right? Yeah. Healing. That's pretty impressive. I don't know why. Pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, I was at, I was at, that's a trailer survey. dealership. Yeah. <laughs> I was at the survey the other day and I forgot who I told, told that to. And they looked like I was, had three eyes. And I'm like, well, it's a true story. True yeah. story. Yes. Yeah. Won 23 horse trailers in his life. Yep. I'm trying to win a buckle. You know, this guy's won an entire trailer dealership. <laughs> yes. Golly, yes. Man. Like some guys got all the luck, man. Yeah. I do get asked a lot, what do you guys fill the cups with? And it, I guess, it, like we talked about it a little bit, but it's changed over the time. Get all hopped up on that Mountain Dew. We get all hopped yeah. up the, on the Rat Bastard. Little Rat Bastard gets you a little too much energy. We we do these things a little in the evening times, and I usually drink my Rat Bastard in uh, about noon, 1 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Kind of gives you a little boost of energy. Well, let's talk about, like, you come from Casa Grande. I mean, that ain't like right around. I mean, I come from Buckeye, but that's not too bad. Yeah. I come over and eat lunch all the time. And, and some, fun. you know, like Caesar, we usually do, you know, 5, 530, you know, so he's passing through that 202 at not the greatest time. So it's the I 10, right? Yeah. They're getting into Phoenix. Oh, Bank Rick. Pass. Yeah. That's the worst, man. Like it's always stopped right there, but it's we get through it. As long as I give myself about an hour and a half to get here, we're all right. What's the goals? Where are we going? You know, um, I haven't talked to you guys too much about it, but, you know, I was... No better time than now. You know, I was hoping that we could... Because uh, when you leave in June? Yep. June. First week in Caesar, June. Dude, yeah. let's go up there. Have you seen the picture? I know. Shows? That's what I was going to say. Beautiful. I can't wait. <laughs> like, uh, what what rodeo would you suggest that, like, up there, like, uh, Cody? Is that too far? Or, or how? Uh, for Montana, that's... Uh, no, like, uh, I mean, it's a little ways away, but uh, like you, you want maybe to hit, hit a rodeo in Montana? Yeah, somewhere up in that area. There's a rodeo in Missoula, Montana. Okay, I heard of it. It's right up there, real pretty country, and uh, the family has a, a lake house. Serena's family has oh. a lake house up there along yeah. the lake that's about an hour north. Oh, yeah. And one of the most Craig, beautiful Craig, make sure you lakes. have uh, shipping boxes <laughs> for the, the lake. It's Flathead Lake, and it's uh, on the western side of the United States. It's one of the biggest freshwater lakes. So it's 20 miles long. It takes forever to get kind of through. You just... Drive right along the river, or sorry, along the the, the lake there, and then you get into uh, Cal Spells, another rodeo they have oh, yeah. there. Pretty cool rodeo way up in the mountains. Real pretty country up there. Yeah, a friend of mine, uh, Butler, moved up there. Yeah, I yeah. I would like to do yeah. that and you know, go up there for one of those, especially while you're up in that country. Mm-hmm. You know, so we could do that. And then another one that you know I, I would love to try to make this year is I would love to to pack up the game and head to Pendleton. I love yes. to fly in and, and set the booth up there and do that. That would be Pendleton is super cool. amazing. I love rodeo. Uh, that's that's do they cool still line. do they still like fly the people in? 
Is that the one they did, like with the, like the uh, for the national anthem kind of a deal with the flag? Oh, they like hook them on their back. They hook them on their backs. Yeah, yeah. like like the no, the that's, zip line. That's uh, Calgary. Oh, Calgary. Calgary does, does that. that. Uh, they'll uh, skydiver come down with, with an American with flag, flag. Okay. and then he'll he'll land in the arena there. That's pretty because cool. I think we could cool. get a lot of of uh, content and footage that day. I mean, geez, of going to the slack and then all the day. I think we could get we could yeah. knock some lot out and then. Another one that I would like to do um, here, you know, in our own state is uh, when I saw the videos last year of, um, was it uh, Snowflake? Or what's Taylor. that? Taylor. Taylor. Taylor Rodeo with the grandstands. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fourth of July. That, that gave, Goo. That yeah, Goo was there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they sent that video. And we did some interviews, or she yeah. did some yeah. interviews from up there. I got to see that in person. That was fucking, that was, oh, it's yes. a one day it's a one day. It's, it's uh, they have a big slack and okay. then one perf. One it's perf, a one yeah. day that goes it starts in the performance during, center and then it'll go all night long. That's the same time we were doing everything in Prescott, right? Yep. That's why we couldn't go. Yep. When I saw that, that gave me chills. Like I, and I think they're all doing the nap, our pledge of allegiance. Yep. And they have a fireworks show too. Yeah. And it's a pretty cool deal. Yeah. yeah. We, I got to go there. I got to see that. But I want to, um, I think this coming year, I think I want to get some more breakaway ropers on. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, some, we got a bunch right here, you know, yeah. we have Macy, Fuller, or, uh, yep. what's her name? Um, Who just, the girl that just set the record lives in um, Gilbert. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, she said like 1.5 or something? Yep, she's pretty, uh, what's her name? She's pretty awesome. Danielle. Yeah, but she, Danielle. Danielle. Yep, she lives right up the road here, not too far away. You know, we got some gamers in Arizona, boys. Man, I, write that down. I do, I, I, uh, I do think we raise them. Yeah, and we raise them and we raise them tough, I think. Desert bread. Desert bread. Desert bread. What is, what's the Wolf Pack doing now? Well, the Wolf Pack is getting ready for the uh, Wilcox Junior Rodeo this weekend. Okay. Uh, that's kind of a big deal. Zorro's, we've been taking the boys to the Junior High Rodeos, and uh, he's been kind of, he gets to hang out with his buddies, but now it's Zorro's turn a little bit more. He does a lot of the events. He goes from barrel race into pole bending to team roping to goat tying. He does all the events at the rodeos there. So yeah. He has fun with it. So that's that's the plan for this weekend. Next weekend, I have a clinic in Louisiana, yeah. Deville, talk, Louisiana. Talk about that a little bit because I mean you've been doing that the whole time, and I mean somehow we always we we always seem to manage to fit these in. You know, I think all of us like to talk in, to these people, so we somehow fit it in. But where you got what do you got planned on the on the coming up for the clinics and stuff? Man, I try to do one or two a month when I head to Montana and um, hang out with the boys and try to schedule rodeos and their ropings. They got to they go to roping every every Thursday over there too in Montana. In Montana, oh, they got okay. a little weekly little series ropings, and I um, my goal these days is to spend time with them. You know, Denton has that look in his eye. We talked to Denton Dunning a little while ago, and and has a try and the fire and stuff like that. And I try to set my I call it the Team Ropers Fantasy Factory at the house. I got goats and I got donkeys and I got, uh, you know, 20 head of steers. Thank, thank you to, yeah. It helps with uh, Brandon Brown here. Help me get a nice little set of steers together for my clinics. And, uh, man, it, I, I give the boys an opportunity. And if they want to, I'm not, I don't want to force my kids to do an, a, a, something like Team Roping. It's just dangerous enough. I don't want to. Feel like I I put them in a point where I made them do it and they get hurt, right? Mm -hmm. So I, if 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 it happens, they get hurt. I, I want it to be where you know they wanted to do this, and and it doesn't scare them away that way. They like me. I cut my thumb off when I was twelve, and two weeks later, a week later, I was ready, ready to be roping again. I wanted to be out there, you know. Mm -hmm. And so my boys, they they have that fire, they have that desire to be out there and want to rope and and get better at the roping. So just. Man, it, it makes my heart happy to, to be there. It used to be rodeoing. Like, it was made my heart happy. You know, I'm married and I love my wife, but going to the rodeos, I love that too. So, but now I'm, I'm having fun hanging I, out with the house, being with the arena and my wife and the boys. The I don't think I've ever asked you this, and I know I haven't asked you on camera, but how hard was that? Like, how hard was that decision? I it, mean, we're, we're close enough now. We're homies, right? So, yeah. I mean, you... How hard was that? It was as hard as uh, we talked to Caleb Schmidt. That was another yeah. another headliner awesome. that I really yeah. loved to talk to. And it, met his family at the hotel. It's, it's the same way. I, I, I loved rodeo, right? And this is what I wanted to do. I set myself up my whole life. This is what I wanted to do. And then 
you have these kids and they want to want to rope your family now this is this is your your like i call my wolf pack they're, they're my team and and you feel like you got a rodeo to go to a stupid rodeo i gotta i gotta leave my kids they they don't want me to leave and i gotta leave to a stupid rodeo mm-hmm. and when i kind of started making that it happened about covid you know when they sent sent me home from houston and i'm sitting in the parking lot the greatest rodeo regular season rodeo you know pays fifty thousand a man sitting there rated rope i'm there a day early i got my ropes ready got got my ropes ready setting up a little pile you know how i am about my ropes oh, yeah, i'm setting a pile i got my yeah, got my horses all it's lined out yeah. you know what i mean everything's taken care of everything's ready and i'm ready to go 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 houston i'm one of the top 10 healers in the world at that time and man i'm feeling good about my rope and and they tell me you need to go home you need to go with your love home to your loved ones right away where this is a pandemic happening and and it's it's serious we need to you need to get home yeah and i said well i'm i'm up at austin next week maybe i'll just kind of hang out maybe this thing will blow over i'll go you know hang out with some buddies and, and wait for austin they said no no prca rodeos mm. we're, we're shutting down no more rodeos there's no sporting events no basketball no nothing i it kind of hit me pretty hard like, how am I going to provide for my family now? This is what I've been doing my whole life. And I got home and God works in mysterious ways. And I got a phone call from a buddy that needed, had some outside horses that need road, you know, a good friend of mine that had some nice horses. So I was went to, went to doing that. And maybe I couldn't have a group clinics. I could only have a few people at a time. And so I was able to make a, a, a little bit of a living. And I found out I, I don't need to rely on my rope to, to, to provide for my family. I can, kind of use my knowledge a little bit about the game and help people get better in the rope. And, and I don't know if it was because of the of Yellowstone or what it was, but there was a kind of an, a, a, a lot of ropers, cowboys. Like cowboys started to be cool. Like they were more people wanted to kind of circulate. And you can tell, I mean, the, the rodeo, the jackpot season just got over with in Arizona and there's there was more teams than ever. I know there's more teams at the Mike survey than there ever was. And I mean, there's Cowboys, Cowboys are are still going to be Cowboys. Right. So, I mean, when, whenever I got that, I I made that decision. Now I say I've been away from the game, you know, four years, I've stepped away, you know, three, four years now and for me to step back in the game (laughs) and have to deal with these debt and dunning kids nowadays that are coming up that are ferocious, man. They, they really mean business. They're out there for blood. They really, they really want to win. And they're your friend. They're good people, and they. But they're when you compete against them, they're they're out for blood. Yeah. And so, so it's it's a tough deal. And then to get in with the headers again, like I stepped away from all the top headers, and now I'm gonna have to build my way back up. And my, that's a journey in itself. So, so like a, I'm not willing to to go through that journey again to get to the top level. I'm wanting to watch my boys get to that level, and if maybe when when they're growing up and. I'll still be a young enough man, I guess. I'll be in my 50s. I'll be able to, you yep. know, high 40s, low 50s, and still try it out. But honestly, it's it's a, it's a tough way to make a living, for I, damn sure. I remember like it was yesterday when uh, cause Tanner Baldwin was in Houston that year too, right? Yeah, yeah. And I remember like you know, he had the melt, meltdown as well. Do you remember on yes. social media? Yes. And he was pissed. You yes. Know? Imagine Tanner. This is the first time. That's the first time you ever made. Yes. Season. He was. He had a hell of a year the year before. I think he ended up 16th. Just barely know? missed the finals. It's right there, you know. So that was a, his career high. And so that he was able to go to Houston next year, and so he's there parking lot. Same thing. He had, yes. <laughs> and they tell him, well, <laughs> you know, Tanner oh, Ball. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, he's a little bit more colorful than this yeah. one. Yeah, right? <laughs> he he let him have it. He told the the president what he felt like. He told <laughs> yeah. he told the mayor. He told everybody how he felt. And they're like, we don't care, Tanner. Go home. But, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, how how would you? How, which, which one would you be? Would you oh, be Tanner or Caesar if you showed up over here with man. you know five hundred thousand dollars worth yeah. of equipment and you watched the Rumble scrapers go through the hayfield? Yeah, because that's was that was you know obviously he didn't make the NFR that year, but that was his uh, that was his reward being able to go to some of them winning yeah. rodeos. So that was his that was his time. That was what, all the work he did the year before was paid off by him letting yeah. go of this. So I I understand it was like almost all for nothing at that yeah. point. You know, it's like that's kind of sucks. So I I feel for him there, but. I mean, that was, oh, man. I don't know. Like COVID cha- changed his mentality on the rodeo game, too. It really did because now he's the same thing. Uh, he, he was one of the guys that live in Arizona that we try to, to, to train the rope horse for charity horses. You know, there's a different, 
there's difference in team roping training and rope horse maturity training. It's a lot longer process to train a maturity horse, slower, more tedious training. And so I spent a lot of time with Tanner and uh, about that time training these horses. And we kind of figured out, hey, we don't have to make a living rodeoing. Right. We don't have to go to every jackpot. We don't have to go. We can kind of train these nice horses, help these people with the rope in. And we could provide for our family that way. Yeah, and how fun was that when we went to the Lazy and watched your horse? Oh, yeah. I mean, that was, I mean, that was cool. We had some skin in the game. That's yeah. what I mean. It's it fun. That's Even fun. During that time, you know, right about that time, uh, Tanner came and stayed with us, for, you know, after that. And he stayed with us a couple of years. And with, with, you know, helping me break in steers and doing all that stuff, that was, without him, it would have been kind of up the creek. But um, you talk about COVID. I had at that time over 400 steers, and there was no ropings going on, nothing going on. And... And everybody, well, just hold on to them. They're going to come back, come back. And without me being a hay farmer, I would have sold them right then and there. But they, when it did come back, we were hitting it hard. Like, it was Every, making some money. How many times a week? Like, you were taking them three, four times a week to a rope. And, and then, like, uh, you know, Tanner, hey, this Mexican rodeo wants 15 head, 20 head. Send them. Let's go. Yeah. We just keep keep wherever they were going to open up. I mean, we didn't care if it was some So, backyard. basically, I mean, you're, you're saying you did exactly the same thing Caesar did. Yeah. yeah. Right, pretty just, much. COVID shut one door, so you guys just went and found another yeah. door you could open. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that's just that's just being men, right? You got a family to take care of, so. And you know, I, my luck. As soon as if I would have sold them the, that week, they would the world would have opened up the next week. You know what I mean? So I was just like, well, I mean, they weren't costing me that much. To I mean, they were, but luckily I was a hay farmer. For that's people that don't understand, for a rodeo guy to to make the NFR and be successful, he's probably gone nine months out of the year, three months home. Uh, so that's like I said. If I wasn't really, I'm not willing to step away that long anymore. Yeah. The boys are uh, even daily. I, I wake up in the morning. I got. I see them that night. Tell them good night, and I see them the next morning. And their their face changes. They're getting taller. Their body changes. Like, man, did you? Get my little I, my little boy used to fit in my palm of my hand right here. Camilo, my oldest one. He he's 13 years old, fixing to be 14, and he's six foot tall. He's yeah. taller than me, and I'm like, and he's shaving. Shaving and, and like his feet are huge and like in his pants. He was wearing my pants for a little while. I grew my pants. So I'm like, what is going on? Like, he's, just calling he's, you. What's the hell, Caesar? He's my little. He's my. He's a man now. It's like it's like to see that he was just a baby. He's my little boy, and now he's a man. It's it's it's. I'm not wanting to step away to that no more. No. Coulter, Coulter really uh, opened my eyes to that because he, he he loved his family a lot. We made the finals in 2008, and he told me. In the middle of July, he says, I can't do this anymore. I can't be gone from the family like this no more. Like, I'm going to give you the rest of this year. I'm going to give you 100% all that I got and 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 try to make the finals. If we don't, this is my last year. 2008 is my last year, Rodeo. Wow. And he did. Wow. We, we won the last. This, wow. this buckle that I wear right here, uh, me and Colt were four flat in the last round and ended the year strong and, you know, like ended out on top. And he did. He didn't buy his card for for a while well i mean 10 years maybe you know there's there's a lot more there's a lot more to it i think than just missing your kids i mean that's high on the list but you know if you have a wife at home and you know i don't know a door falls off the hinges or you know maybe her truck doesn't start in the morning i mean those are all phone calls you guys got to be getting on the road i mean i only go from from buckeye to wilcox to our, our processing plant down there and i i feel like when i'm away like there's stuff at home. Always should, stuff that breaks doing, down. You know well, I mean? yeah, and like if she gets a flat tire and said, I should be the guy to fix it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's my job. That's what I signed up for. You know, there was all that stuff happening. You're gone. You're a thousand miles away. And you, you wanted to be home because there's something that broke down that needs to be fixed. The water line. Yeah. Little things like that. It's like man, like that shit has to wait. Yeah, and that's what people don't understand. The normal fan, they think these two guys are just millionaires and they're having the time of their life and they're roping. They don't understand that this guy's house, yeah, the, the water. You know, they don't understand life. You know, they just yeah. think these guys should never miss. And well, but that's what I think this podcast does. Is it? Is it? You know, it mm -hmm. it Opens talks it to, it talks to Caesar that you've seen pulling his hat down tight and ripping some feet off, and then you get to hear from him that, yeah, man, my wife get a flat tire and I'm a thousand miles away. I feel like a piece of shit. Like I can't. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and, and that I affects. I can't help her. I love her. And yeah. that affects his roping. It, well, you know, well would you want to be home? And there's guys, like I said, at Denton Dunning, yeah. that's 18. He's got this whole future ahead of him. He doesn't have a wife that's got a flat tire. Yeah. He is there to to win and there to do business, and that's it. He wants to be there. And you're 
Have wanting, have you're home. wanting to be home because like you got some shit breaking down and like you that that mindset changes over there when you've got a back in the box your head, header spins one for the day money and all of a sudden your mind's in a different absolutely different, like denton dunny his mind is all about feet right now and so for a month i haven't seen that kid rope a leg yeah it's yeah. been nothing but two feet for the last month you and know what, what i mean and what did he tell us like oh yeah back in the box over there at the bfi and i just kind of cruised down there <laughs> and wait for him to turn the steer like but i mean that goes to exactly what you're saying he he he, he kind of let it he, they wrote muleys two days before yeah. when he won the junior BFI, and that is a totally different oh, game yeah. when you're roping fresh muley or you, know, you heifers like that yeah. than roping an M brand. They're just they're they're trickier the heifers are. So like his his mindset is just like, hey, we're just out here just having fun. I'm like that guy right there is is gonna be a world champ, world class roper, and and that's who I have to deal with. It, it's gonna he's he's a great white shark you know what i mean <laughs> we're swimming in the shark tank together and he's a he's a, he's on the top over here and, and if you're not careful you're gonna be one of the bottom feeder sharks the bull, yeah. and they're gonna they're you just just that's what it is and i i i had to make that decision like i guess covid made that decision for me like yeah. I, okay like you, you said you, man you cannot rodeo it's like a jb mooney you know what i mean yeah. oh, you're not gonna go rodeo you can't rodeo no more you're you're, yeah. you're done and and like it was only for a few months, right? And that in that time, my mind completely changed. So, but yeah, well, it's pretty neat. Well, before we end it. this real quick, I want to say thank you to your guys' wives and my wife too, oh, Arena, oh. Sarah, and Craig, your wife, your Julia, Julia, <laughs> Julia big shout out, shout out, and my wife too. I mean, I know that they have a lot to to do with all this, being able for us to do this too. So yeah, because Trina it. probably rolls her eyes every time you have one of these <laughs> ideas, but I know my wife does. But. Yeah, we love them. All right. Well, love thanks, man. Let's uh, let's do another year. Let's kick some ass. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, plan, and we appreciate everybody. So, thank and you it, for all those big Lebowski fans. <laughs> the sign really ties the room together. It really, does. It really does. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.